So for our student choice, Daisy had raised the, um, the question of how do we use remote sensing for fire, mapping, monitoring and management. Okay. Now it's all a little bit too easy if I give you the answers to this because then I might as well just write your final project for you. So very smart, <laughs> nice one and I'm surprised nobody came up with it sooner. Um, but let's discuss it, yeah? Okay, so I want to discuss it in terms of the three things that I brought up to you guys last week, okay, when I talked about um, search and rescue and finding MH370. Okay, so we talked about our critical subject information, which is understanding the who, what, where, when, how, why, yeah. The environmental information, so that's any considerations or impediments to our ability to detect, map, monitor our environment of interest and then linking that with some sensor options. So on the Padlet, you'll see that I've, I've put up those three areas, our critical subject information, our environmental information, and sensor options. Okay, now fire is too broad. Okay, so Daisy, since this is your topic, what is it about fire that you're interested in? So have a think about it to start with. How, um, what sort of information might we need to, to assess where fire has been in the past. Fire scars, perfect. Okay, so our critical subject information is really about mapping fire scars. Okay, so does someone want to pop that in for me up there? Um, so what is it that we might want to know about fire scars? Yep, okay, so drop that in. So we want to know the extent of, where, of how big they are. Distribution. Yep, their distribution, whereabouts they're actually occurring. Frequency, yep, how often they're occurring. Direction, perhaps, yeah, we might be able to get that out, yeah, look at winds and stuff, yeah. How old, yeah, when they actually occurred. Potentially how quickly they're revegetating as well, which goes into the landscape recovery. So if you think about spatial, spectral, temporal and radiometric, so spatial information, what do we need? Uh, location. location. How big it is, yeah general area that it's covering. Okay, so that's going to affect which sensor we choose and the dimensions of that sensor. Okay, so you know, are we going to prioritise something that covers a large area or that has high detail? Okay, so that's where that conversation comes in. Okay, spectral. What sort of information might we need about fires if we're thinking about colour? Essentially the spectral signature of the burnt area. Okay, and other features that might get confused for it that are occurring in the area as well. Okay, so this is all the critical subject information. Spatial, spectral, what are the temporal, temporal aspects that we need? How frequently it occurs? What time of year? Okay, so just keep trying to populate these ones up here, that way everybody has the same ascent notes really. Okay, so that's all our critical subject information, stuff about that fire scar that we want to map. Okay, environmental information. This is stuff that affects our ability to map that fire scar. Okay, that's not necessarily related to the scar itself, but it might cause an impediment to us mapping that. What sorts of things do it might be of interest to us there? So any mountain ranges, lakes, lakes which might look similar mountain ranges which might shade features. So if we want to model, then we'd be interested in fuel loads and how dry the environment is, yeah? So that might be another layer of information that we want to bring in potentially in a GIS. What would be one thing that would um, likely obscure our imagery <laughs> that might be related to fire, so we might not be able to map the scars themselves? It's one thing that's quite obvious here. Smoke, yeah. So in our critical in environmental information, we might think about smoke cover, cloud cover. So then once we do that, then we start to think about our sensor options, okay? So this is really linking what our requirements are, okay? So if you're interested in mapping the fire scars across Northern Territory, your answer for a sensor is going to be different to if you just want to map Darwin. Okay, so if I want to map all of Northern Territory, my big thing is going to be spatial extent. I need a sensor that's going to cover a large area. Okay, 
With Darwin, I don't necessarily need that. Okay, so you, you need to answer that question first. What is your area of interest are you interested in? Okay, what other sorts of things? So if we go, we go spatial first, that's going to restrict to that we either have a high spatial detail or large spatial extent. What about spectral? What ideas have you got in terms of spectral bands? We looked at this um, in the exercise on Friday when we looked at a fire scar. Any ideas as to which bands were giving us information? Short the shortwave infrared. Was it bright or dark? dark? Okay, dark. Yep. So if it's dark, what does that mean in terms of reflection or absorption? Absorbing a lot of light. Okay. So we pop that down in our sensor options area. Okay, because that's giving us one key bit of information. The sensor that we want to use should have shortwave infrared on it. Okay. And this week in the practical exercise, you guys are actually going to build a table of a number of different sensors and satellites that you'll be able to link this sort of information with. So you, you can just quickly scan down and go, oh yeah, that one's got shortwave infrared. Yes, I can use it for this application. Okay. What other spectral information might be of use when you're considering fires? Thermal. Thermal. Okay. So that's if we're looking at the, you know, the fires occurring right now, for example, yeah? But still could, that could be of interest to us to pick those ones that then might, we might be able to then use that as a potential calibration of, yes, that is a fire scar because it also occurred near where there was an active fire. Do you okay. Cloud yes, you might be able to look at cloud and smoke cover differences with fire. Yep, absolutely, with the thermal. Okay, so you might want to pop down there that we've got thermal and then again, that's going to restrict the sensors that we use and the approach that we take. So for example, QuickBird doesn't have a thermal band. Okay, so that might completely cut it out for this application. All right, temporal. So we know that um, primarily the fires are occurring in the dry season. What we don't know necessarily is how rapidly the ground is, is revegetating. Okay, so there might be a specific time of year that we need to acquire that imagery. Might need to acquire imagery in November every year, for example. Okay? So if you're really strict that you have to get data in November, then you're actually probably going to need a satellite that acquires data quite frequently because that's going to increase your probability of capturing imagery when you want it. So you might not necessarily need data every day, but if you capture data every day, you'll get at least one image that's cloud free. Whereas if you rely on Landsat, for example, you might get one image in the month and it's cloudy. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So some, some areas are going to revegetate very quickly and you'll see a change quite quickly. Um, but you'll also see in the image that we use for our practicals that you can see the difference between some new and some old fire scars as well. So while on the ground you can see, yeah, there's some, there's revegetation happening really, really quickly, um, there's a lot of fire scars still apparent underneath it. Um, and the satellite still picks that up. Okay. So when we're, when we're considering a particular application, be it fire or reef mapping or seagrasses or mangroves, whatever it is, this is the process that we go through. So we work out what the information is about the subject that we require, any additional environmental information that might either assist us or be an impediment. So assist might be when we're talking about wind, for example, okay? So that's, that's for our you know, supplementary information. And then what we want to do is to link that with our sensor options, okay? So you'd be able to come up with at the end, which you'll be able to do by the end of this semester, have an example and then tell me what satellite sensor you would use to attack that problem, okay? What's going to be the best bet? Okay, so does that make sense as a process? It doesn't matter what environment you're doing it in. Okay, it's just understanding that framework that you go through. Okay, does that help with your question, Daisy, without answering your yeah, project?